Hey friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Angela. Today we are doing some macrame projects and I wanted to say this was macrame for beginners because this is really my first attempt at macrame, uh, but one of them's a little bit more involved and you'll see that as we get started. So let's jump right in. For this first project, we are creating this adorable macrame heart coaster. You're gonna need two millimeter macrame cord and I picked this up from Amazon. Well, I didn't pick this up, I ordered this from Amazon. And we're gonna cut down 14 strips that are 28 inches long. I watched a few videos on how to make this um, and I ended up cutting my strings a little bit shorter because you do still have waist and I wanted the least amount of waist as possible. Once you have those cut, you're also going to need four shorter strips. I just had scraps from other coasters that I made. I made a set of these, but you could cut about like four inches, I would say. So next, you're just going to take all 14 of your strands and we are going to create a lark's head knot along. You can use, you don't have to use another piece of macrame to, um, not the lark's head knot you could use like a dowel rod you could use a stick anything that's just going to keep this stationary while you work i just happen to have a scrap piece of macrame so that's what i'm using but to create that lark's head knot you just loop your well you fold your string in half and then you loop it loop it under and then pull the strings through i was trying to explain that as i was watching it some of these macrame projects are a lot harder to explain than it is to just watch what you're doing. So I definitely understand why a lot of the videos, there is no voiceover in them. I don't know if anyone else has noticed that, but I def I wanted to create a video where I was actually explaining what to do because every macrame video I've ever watched, it is just them pointing to things and writing a few words on the screens. There is never any voiceover. Once you have everything stringed up, you're gonna set two of the strands aside on either side. And then we're gonna take the next four and we're going to create a square knot. So this is the only knot we are going to use in this whole project. First, you're gonna create a backwards four, take that far left string, pull it on top, and then you're going to loop it under those middle two and through your backwards four. So I hope that makes sense, but you'll definitely see me do that quite a lot in this project. Then you just wanna pull it and you wanna keep those two in the center. Those are like your, your guide. I don't know, I don't know what you would call those, but you just wanna make sure that those are nice and tight. And you don't wanna go all the way up because we need that fringe at the end. We're gonna cut off that top. So now we're gonna create the second half of our square knot and create a regular four. Again, with your right strand on top, loop it behind and through, and then pull it tight. So this is one knot. And now we're gonna create the same thing. We're gonna take the next four strands and create another knot, another square knot. So I had a girl reach out to me from on Facebook Marketplace to make these for her. Um, I have sold a few things on Facebook Market, but over Christmas I was making all of these adorable like North Pole mailboxes and sold a, several of them on Facebook Marketplace. So this girl reached out to me and she was like, hey, I bought one of your mailboxes. Do you think you can make me this macrame heart coaster? And I was like, it doesn't look too complicated. Let me look up some videos. I think I can do that. And so, yeah, I figured why not just make a video if I'm gonna make these for her. So that's where my macrame video came from today. But now you're just gonna, you created two knots on the left side. Now we're gonna move over to the right and do the same thing. So this is gonna be the very top of our heart, which is why we're leaving some of these other strings out because we want this to be our highest point. Now 
Now that we have those four, we can pull our side two pieces that we set, up, set off to the side there, pull them back down, and now we're gonna go to our next row using those two outer strands. So again, we're just gonna create that same square knot, only knot we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna keep saying that, but you wanna pull this up against the knot that we just created in that first row. You don't wanna pull it too tight, but you do want to make sure that it's butted up right below that first knot. And then we're just going to move along. We're going to create three more in this row. So you're going to take the second half of that first knot and then the first strands of the next knot. I'm sure, like I said, this is so sometimes confusing to explain, but you can see what I'm doing. Grabbing two strings from one knot, two strings from another knot, and then we are pulling those together. And you can see you're starting to create that like diamond shape up at the top. It will become a lot more apparent as we move down into the next row, but you don't, you want to be able to see that diamond. So you'll see that here in a minute. But now we're going to take two additional strands that we did not use in that first row because we're going to start to create now that V shape that goes down at the top of the heart. So three knots here and then we're going to move over to the right side and do the same thing. I tried to speed this up a good bit because it is very repetitive, but I make sure I'm going to make sure to explain where it's necessary to and slow it down for those parts. Totally understand if you want to fast forward through some of this though, it is very repetitive. All right. So now we have that row. We're going to take two strands out again, from both the left side and the right side. And now we're going to start our next row. So again, with the four, two strands from one knot, two from the next. And now you can really see that diamond shape that we're creating here. Don't pull too tight because you want that to be there. The second knot that you do, so the first half of your square knot, you don't want to pull too tight. You want to pull it tight enough, but not too tight. And then the second half of your square knot, you, that's where you want to like tighten the knot and make sure it's not going anywhere. So I hope that makes sense. And then the two strands that are in the center, I just keep playing with those and pulling those to make sure they're nice and tight. And that's also going to help you keep that diamond shape. So now we're grabbing the last strands that we had hanging in the center there. And again, you don't want to pull those too tight because you want to keep them in line with the row that you're working on, you don't want to pull them so tight that they're like kind of going up into the previous row. So now we have our two halves of the heart and I'm going to grab one of those smaller strips that we cut that's about four inches and we're going to create a lark's head knot on this outer left strand. So pull it tight and then slide it all the way up against that knot that it's right under. And you're going to do the same thing on the right side. So we're just going to add that lark's head knot strand because this is going to help with our fringe going around that curved part at the top of the heart whenever we're finished. And you'll see how that plays into this. So now we're gonna go into our next row. We're not gonna set anything aside here. We're gonna grab all four from the beginning. And you want, you're gonna see this one's not really gonna create that diamond shape because of the um, little fringe piece that we added to it, but that's okay. Still pull it. Tight enough, but not too tight. And here's where we're going to connect our heart and make it into one. And 
and I just kept playing with it here just to make sure it was looking even and tight enough. And again, like I'm gonna keep saying, not too tight. I made several of these before actually filming it because I, I made two sets of four for this girl. And the very first one that I did was definitely my tester, um, but I was pulling it too tight and I didn't realize that you wanted that diamond shape in there. So I was pulling way too tight and it just looked a little funny at the top until I realized like, oh, you actually do want that space in there. So now for the next row, again, we're gonna take out two of those strands on the left and on the right. We're gonna start, this is the last part of the heart before we start tapering down. All right, so now we're gonna take those last two strips that we have in the smaller four inch ones and we're gonna do the same thing, create another lark's head knot, pull it nice and tight on both the left side and the right. And guys, I apologize if I sound a little funny. I had a ear infection the last few days and it is finally like going away, but now I feel like it's affecting my throat and my voice, so I apologize. So now we're just going to move down to the next row. We're gonna use all of the strands in this one. Nothing is gonna get left off to the side here. Okay, so now we're gonna start tapering down the rest of the heart. So we're gonna take two strands out on both sides again, create our row, and then we're gonna keep repeating that same process the rest of the way down. So you're gonna take out two strands for each new row so that we can start to taper down and there are less knot, there's one less knot in each row, if that makes sense. <laughs> but totally understand if you wanna skip ahead through this part, this part is even more repetitive than the top part was because you're just taking out two strands, one less knot each row, all the way down until you have one knot left forming the tip of your heart. So while we're watching this part play out, I wanted to ask you guys, what is your decor style and also what types of videos do you like to watch? The main reason I started my channel was because I couldn't find videos or tutorials or inspiration and ideas to fit into my home decor style. So much of what is on YouTube right now is farmhouse, which is fine. I love watching the farmhouse videos because I do get a lot of inspiration on ways that um, I can still incorporate them into my own home. But I'm just curious to know like what your guys' style is and what kind of videos you like to watch. I also don't wanna just be known for like Dollar Tree DIYs or thrift flips or furniture flips or things like that. I enjoy doing all of those things and I wanna incorporate all of them on my channel. But I'm trying to figure out what do my viewers like to watch? What do my subscribers like to watch? because I've definitely noticed there are themes in like my most watched videos, but it might not necessarily be my exact style of what I like to do. Um, I do still wanna do farmhouse because I actually am working on a um, side table thrift flip right now that is going to be at farmhouse because I know it's gonna sell well, to be honest. 
Um, but yeah, just want to know in the comments, let me know what your style is, what kind of videos you like to watch so I can get an idea of what I should be creating for you guys. Now we're down to the last knot. Once you have that complete, you can untape or just whatever you have holding this down and just slide, slide the heart off. So then we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut. You can cut as much or as little fringe as you want on this part. Um, I tried to make it a little longer rather than shorter just because we are gonna like brush it out and then go back and trim off anything and just shape it up. So I would rather start with more than less. And for some reason, I didn't think about just flipping it over and cutting <laughs> on the right side both times because I can cut much better on my right than I can on my left. Is anyone else like that? Very strange. But then we're just gonna cut all of these loops off at the top. And I wanted to make sure, this is the only part that worries me about it maybe coming undone is the very top. The rest of those knots are like real secure down the edges. Um, but I was a little worried, so I pulled those tighter just to make sure they're not going to come undone. So once you have everything cut off, it looks a little crazy. So then we're just going to take a thin comb or you can take a dog brush I've used before. Also, we're just going to comb out all of those strands. And then I'm going to take my flat iron and we're just going to straighten them out a bit very quickly, very lightly. I didn't hold it down on any of these. I didn't want to ruin it. And then I just kept going back and forth with straightening and combing until I was satisfied with how it looked. And the last step is just to give it a little haircut, shape it up. And that is it. I love how these look. I think I'm going to make a set for myself. I'm almost done making this set for the girl who asked for them, but I definitely think they turned out so cute and not something I would have thought to make on my own. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that first DIY. I wanted to jump back in real quick and say if you are enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already, and become part of my DIY family. Let's get back into it. For this next project, um, I'm taking some four millimeter macrame cord. Again, I got this from Amazon. I will link it below. This is just like the natural color. And then I got black matte four millimeter macrame cord from Hobby Lobby. And this is a completely different texture. It's a different twist. I don't like it. I would not actually recommend getting this. I much prefer the one I got from Amazon and it also does come in a lot of colors. So then I'm taking this steel ring that I got from Hobby Lobby as well, $2.99. It was 40% off that day and I spray painted it with a rose gold um, metallic color. So then I cut down all of the strands I wanted to use and I just used my like wingspan two times and that was the length of my rope. And again, I just created the lark's head knot wrapping all of these around my ring. And I think I used five white and two black in each section and I have three sections. So I'm making kind of like a wind chime looking thing and for this one, I am using a double half hitch knot on a diagonal. 
And I'll explain how to do that here in a second, but it was hard to see on um, the black on black cord. So I can explain it better when you have the contrast of the black and the white. So the way you wanna make this is take, the black is gonna go on top, your white under, and you're just gonna loop it through and pull it. And then you're gonna take your white from the opposite direction on top of the black and loop it through. So it's almost like that backwards four. So that's the knot we're gonna create on this one. That's the only knot we're gonna use here. And I just created a V shape um, from starting from the left and then from the right until I got down into the center. So <laughs> you can see here, I messed up. I wanted to leave that in because these are the very first projects I've made with macrame, not the first, I made one other project before with macrame, but this is the true first like, somewhat difficult ones I guess I've made. So I was definitely learning this weekend while making these and throughout this process. I watched a lot of videos and tutorials but wanted to make something for myself. So you can see if I can learn this, anybody can. It was really, really easy but certainly some mistakes along the way. So once I had my two sides, then I'm going to do the same thing create that same um, double half hitch knot with the two black strands now to combine the two sides. And I'm not gonna show you guys this entire project because it took quite a while to make and it's the same thing repeated on all of the sides. So now I'm just taking the next layer. I did two V shapes, so like one right under the other, diagonals, Vs, I don't know. Doesn't matter, it's the same thing, I guess. Um, but I just put a little space in between them And again, I did this all the way down. This video is also pretty long, so I didn't wanna keep going and showing you the same thing over and over. It was also really difficult to film this because I couldn't get a good angle of it and it was like hanging from my ceiling while I'm trying to do this. So it was definitely like moving around all over the place. Uh, I don't know how else I could have filmed it though. So hopefully you're okay with it wobbling everywhere. So now we have our two sides again and I'm going to combine them and create like a little diamond shape in the center. And I did kind of get um, inspiration from from Pinterest for this and I will show that. But then I'm taking these plastic reusable straws that I got from Dollar General. There's two sizes in there. I only end up using the larger ones. And at first I was gonna paint them. Well, I did paint them, but I didn't like how it looked. So I spray painted them with that same rose gold color that I used on the top ring. And then I cut these down into small little pieces and man, these things were hard to cut. Let me tell you, I used my scissors, I used my miter shears, I used the box cutter. I was like, I'm not gonna take these out and use the saw because that's a little aggressive, but they were really hard to cut. I had to put a lot of force into it. I don't know if you can tell like how hard I am pushing here, but they were rough. I just cut down all of my pieces and then I'm going to string them along. I'm calling this a wind chime just because of those pieces at the bottom. This isn't actually gonna make any noise in the wind, but I still like the way it looks. So then I'm just stringing them all along and I want them to be at varying heights and my OCD, I was trying really hard to make this like not symmetrical, not look too thought out. I just wanted them to be very sporadic. So once I got everything on there, I started combing out my macrame cord and here's where you're really gonna see how terrible the black one is. So I comb it out and like, look at that. It just looks like a hot mess. So I'm like, I'll take my straightener to it. Bad idea, just watch. 
Oh, it pulled it right off. And I should have known because it was like a polyester, not cotton. So duh, of course it was just going to melt it. But anyways, I just ended up cutting those ones off and just making them a knot at the bottom. And I only frayed the white ones. So next I had, initially I just had the strings holding this up, but I had some straws left over. So I figured I would use those because my inspiration image did have, theirs was probably actual like pipe or something, metal hanging from the top of it. So I thought I would be able to do that as well. So I got all of my straws on there and then I'm taking, so there's two that are part of one loop, like Lark's head knot on there. So I'm gonna take two that are next to each other and tie those together. And I just did a simple knot here. And I tied all of those three together and that's it for this one. It's not, it's, it's somewhat like my inspiration, but there are so many things you can do with macrame and making your own designs. So you can just have fun with this and just let your imagination run wild. But I love the way this turned out. I think it is so cute. Is it perfect? No, absolutely not. It's, I, I still love the way it looks. I'm still proud of it, but by no means is it exactly what I thought it would look like. And here it is hanging up on my porch where I plan to leave it. Just blowing in the wind. All right, for this last project, we are making a plant hanger. Plant hanger? Yeah, plant hanger. So I'm taking these pop-up stickers and then a garden dish from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to take those pop-up stickers, place them around the edge. I'm making sure that they're pretty evenly spaced. And then I'm going to paint my dish. Here's how it's looking. And then I'm going to take my ivory Waverly chalk paint. And I end up giving this three coats on the inside and the outside. And you wanna make sure you get all around all of those dots so this ends up looking like one piece. And I've seen so many people doing this lately, I really wanted to try it because I love the way it looks. So once that's all dry, I take my Waverly Wax and at first I used this like short stiff brush and it was putting a little too much paint on so I go back in with my white, go over it to kind of tone it down a bit. And I loved how this was looking. So then I thought, okay, let's take a more like flimsy brush to dry brush with and go all over the whole thing. And then I'm gonna come back in with my white at the end and tone it down again. But I started really loving how the texture of this was looking over top of like the several layers of chalk paint I had done. So I started going in like all different directions and making it look like really textured and worn and old. And I really, this was not the direction I was going in at first, but I love how it turned out. So then I wanted to add a little more dimension to it. I grabbed my mineral colored chalk paint and I'm doing the same thing, just going in all different directions, dry brushing it all over. And this looks really cool. In the last step, I'm gonna take my white and again, I'm just dry brushing it still, but I'm going over everything where it was a little too harsh or I wanted to tone it down a bit. And this just makes it look even more worn. And I just really love how it looked. <laughs> like I said, this was not how I was planning to do this at first, but love the way it looks. So then we need to make the plant hanger. And I'm gonna take eight strands again that are my wingspan twice. And I'm using that same cord that was from Hobby Lobby that I don't love, but it actually worked really well for the plant hanger since I wasn't trying to actually fray it. So I looped my eight strands over. I'm using the tan color as you can see and I'm gonna take the top and I'm gonna just wrap a loop around it. So I'm gonna take an extra strand, hold it there with my finger, 
loop it around my other finger. <laughs> I'm sorry I get out of frame here. This one was also really difficult to try and film because I wanted it to be hanging. I needed it to be hanging up to actually make this work. And I initially did record it on my craft table, but it was really hard to make it come out right to make like the measurements around the plant hanger work. I couldn't really figure it out. So this one was another one. Anyway, it's hard to film, but I just wrap it around several times. And you can see, I will link the video where I make another tassel using this method and I really explain it well. Um, but then you're just gonna cut it off, pull that end of the strand through the loop that we created and then you're gonna take the beginning of your strand and pull that tight, which is gonna create your knot and it's gonna conceal your knot. So you're not gonna see any of that. And then you just cut off the excess. And then I hang it up and I'm taking four strands. So now we're going to create a cobra knot. And I'm gonna do this four times for the four sides that need to go around the plant hanger. So to do a cobra knot, you're gonna make that four. It's kind of like a square knot. It is half of a square knot over and over. So you're gonna make that four, take the strand on the right, loop it behind and through the four. So you can see here, I'm gonna do it several times, but you just keep doing that same direction over and over. And that is how you get that like cobra twist. So you don't wanna end up going the opposite direction because then that would just be the square knot. You'll see here, it starts to twist around as we keep going. And I'm gonna do, I did eight knots to create my cobra knot. And then I do that four times for all four sides. So then I take my, my potter plant <laughs> and hold it up to see how exactly I want it to sit. And I wanted the cobra knot part to be up a little bit higher. It didn't end up working out that way based on where I put my next knot, but that's okay. I still love the way it looks. Um, but now we're gonna take two strands from two different cobra knots and now we're going to do a square knot with those. Again, this is like really difficult to explain, but so easy to do. And now I'm going to create my square knot. I create two square knots and I want to make sure that they're lined up with each other. So that first one I did, the second one, I'm going to just make sure it's the same height all the way around. So I'm going to create four sections of this. And again, I'm taking two strands from my from one cobra knot, two strands from the cobra knot next to it, and that is going to create our square knot so that we're, we're getting that like pattern of how it's gonna hold the planter. And if you use like a deeper planter, this probably would have been even easier. I really wanted that shallow look, so that's why I went with the planter that I did. But if you had like a regular pot that was tall, this would have been so much easier to try and like figure out. But then again, I'm going down a little bit, making two more square knots, and you can see here how it sits in, how my planter is gonna sit in there with the knots that we created. So you just keep doing that same thing. You take two strands from one knot, two strands from the next knot next to it, and then create your new knots. And for the bottom part, I was just doing square knots. So then I wanted this to start closing in on itself. So I made them really um, close together here. And again, I'm gonna do that all the way around. And then at the bottom, I'm just gonna wrap it just like I did the top. So it has that like cohesive look at the bottom. And last, we just need to add in our floral. So I'm just taking some floral foam, hot glued it to the bottom, and then I have this eucalyptus bush that I got from Walmart. This was one of their $5 picks. It wasn't like the 
less expensive ones, like their 198 cent ones or whatever they are. But I really loved how this looked. So I'm just playing around with the arrangement and how it's going to sit. And that's it for this one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Was this a little more complicated to follow with a voiceover? I don't know. Maybe it was. Here's how it looks. I just love the way this turned out and I really love that shallow greenery pot. This could go in so many different decor styles. You could fit this into like the minimalist, the Scandinavian, the farmhouse with the distressing. Like this could go in so many homes. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Also, let me know what your style is because I love to watch a lot of different types of videos and I'm trying to figure out like what my subscribers and viewers prefer. I'm not a big fan of farmhouse personally, but I do watch a lot of farmhouse videos because I can still get inspiration from them and make them my own and fit into my own decor style. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. I don't just want to be known for Dollar Tree. I don't want to just be known for thrift flips or furniture flipping. I like doing all of those things. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you like to watch and what your style is. See you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed those three macrame projects. I had a lot of fun making these. It was very relaxing being able to just sit down, put on a good show and get to work making a bunch of knots. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one.